The man skidded over the cobbles of the old town and breathlessly pulled himself through an open wooden door into a house whose residents had long since vanished. He swiftly closed the door behind him and stood in the derelict building, his heart thumping hard against his ribcage. The darkness was so intense that even when the man held his hand up to his face and waved it, he couldn't discern any movement. He waited. The only sound in the pitch black was his breathing, gradually slowing to a calmer pace then followed by a deep sigh of relief. The man fished inside his long black coat and produced a small torch, which he flicked on gingerly and surveyed his surroundings. Despite everything, the man could not help but smile slightly as he looked around the old house that appeared so similar to the one he spent the first few years of his life in. There were remnants of patterned carpet on the floor. A tablecloth lay on top of a small wooden table surrounded by chairs, each with a cushion on the seat that was delicately embroidered with flowers. On the walls were paintings of various landscapes, and one photograph of the seaside with people smiling dully through dust-covered glass. His inspection was cut short by a noise from the street outside. He flicked off his torch and felt his breath rise once more into his chest. As he strained to listen, the sounds became louder until they were unmistakably the noise of boots, several pairs of boots and of voices calling to one another. The taste of failure was so bitter in his mouth it felt as if he might be sick. He must have deluded himself into believing that for some reason he was special, for some reason he was going to escape. One would have thought the events of the past evening had convinced him that success was not an option. Grimly, he made a decision. Moments later, the man was pelting up a dark road past broken street lamps with the sound of pursuit getting louder by the second. He had to hold his hand up to his mouth to guard against clouds of noxious vapour escaping from the old underground sewers, while derelict houses on each side observed his struggle through impassive grey windows. As he rounded a corner, the enormous outer wall of New City One came into view. At the end of the road before him was the northeast service gate. The man dashed up to the intercom and pressed a button. He waited impatiently for an answer, frequently checking the long dark street behind him for any sign of pursuit. Finally, there was a crackle, and a voice spoke. Access code? The man took a deep breath and said, Alpha, Charlie, Tango, Foxtrot, please help me. I'm a transport driver, reference 3691, food supply. I was attacked by scavengers, they took my truck, please. They aren't far behind. There was a pause. The man wondered if the guards could hear the thumping of his heart over the intercom. Very well. Stand back. Gate opening. The laser defence shield will only be open for a minute, so you'll have to op it. Without hesitating, no longer daring to look round, the man sprinted through. He ran over the dusty waste ground between the outer and inner wall and heard the enormous defensive shield lowering behind him. The inner gate was opening slowly, and his heart leapt slightly as he saw there were only two guards. His intelligence had been spot on. The guards were both trained professionals, but it was only a service gate and they had worked a long shift and were dreaming of a good hot meal and bed, and besides, no one in their right mind would launch an attack directly on New City One unless they had a death wish. The main reason the guards died, though, was the speed at which the man reached into his large outer pocket, withdrew a device and aimed it at each sentry in turn. The second guard had only managed to remove the safety catch from his weapon when he saw a flash of bright green light and crumpled on top of his partner. The man hurried to the small control panel and pressed the emergency gate release switch. Like everything in the new city, it closed quickly and smoothly, making only the slightest whoosh and then a click as the two sides met in the middle. Green light flashed once again and the opening mechanism was rendered inoperable. It wouldn't hold them for long, but it would help.